Yes, zebras versus unicorns. <laughs> Had a lot of fun coming up with this topic. So first of all, hi, I'm Tal. Today I'm going to talk to you about zebras and why we're building our company as a zebra as opposed to a unicorn. Now, first of all, just a quick disclosure. This is not a concept that we have come up with. Uh, it's been around for a long time, but I do find that the in this technology zoo that exists today, the lens of uh, a zebra company is definitely something that helps me look at our company in a much more efficient way. But before we ride together into the zebra planes, let me give you a bit of an overview about Betteres and what it is that we do. So just a quick show of hands. Uh, who's been on a bus in the last few years? Come on, let's see them. Okay, most, most people have. Yeah, the bus industry is what we call the last frontier of travel. Uh, it's uh, decades out of, uh, out of date, uh, yet billions of people are moving by bus uh, around the world every, every single year. We had this massive vision. It was very exciting. We were going to disrupt the entire industry. It's going to be awesome. So many companies are going to come up and sign with Better as we build reservation systems. Every single bus company in the world was going to sign up with us. It would be insane. Yes. I, unfortunately, it did not quite pan out that way. Um, real life hit. Yes, we realized we had to execute on customers, on sales, uh, what else, operations, uh, engineering. Yeah, the truth was that we were not a unicorn. Uh, chances are, you're probably not either. Yeah. Now, building or being an entrepreneur is, uh, is definitely a, a difficult game at times. Being a billion dollar entrepreneur is actually a statistical improbability, right? It's a statistical improbability. Now, this is not about telling you not to think big. Thinking big is absolutely necessary. You have to think big when you have an idea. It's an, a necessary part of the formula. But uh, I'll use a, a football analogy since I'm talking about games, uh, American football, uh, that is. Uh, just about every play in American football is designed to be a touchdown, but most plays are not. Obviously, you have to put together that strategy, piece those things together continuously in order to be able to win the game. One of my favorite movie quotes right here, yes. You think there's a chance. Yes, there is, there is a, a chance. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the chance is. We try to figure it out, but you know, th there's a small chance of your company being venture-backed, we know that. Out of the companies that are venture-backed, less than half a percent actually become uh, billion dollar companies, okay? So if your main focus is about crazy growth, if that's what you're gonna focus your company, statistically you are unlikely to be able to build something sustainable long term, okay? Um, most companies are not unicorns. Uh, chances are, like I said, you're not going to be either. So the question is, what is it that you define as success early on? This is a celebrity death match, zebra versus unicorn. Um, I wish I learned more about unicorns earlier, earlier in my career. Um, unicorn, uh, sorry, I, I knew about unicorns, I mean zebras. I wish I learned more about zebra principles earlier in, uh, in my career. Uh, zebras have dual purpose. They focus on uh, profit as well as cause. Um, they think about things like community and society, not just shareholders and investors. Those are important. Typically, they're between five and $50 million in annual revenue. Um, so that's kind of the size of company. They have this herd mentality that they uh, think through. Um, what else can I tell you about zebra companies? They form groups, they help each other, they protect each other. Um, they ultimately represent a plurality of winners as opposed to a single predatory player. So as a founder of a sustainable zebra company, uh, my advice can boil down to three practical tips, uh, tips for you. Uh, focus on real business uh, versus world domination. Have a long-term plan, something that is sustainable, right? Make sure you think that through. Find your market uh, need and serve that as well as you can. The pace is one thing to think about. I, I like what Fiona was saying earlier. It might be a bit slower until you know exactly what it is that you want to do, but you still have an opportunity to create tremendous value for your customers, for your communities, and for your business. Two, realistic approach to budgeting. 
Um, I call this a realistic operational budget. As a company owner, you probably have several budget models that you're running depending on who you're showing it to. This is the one that you use day to day. Okay, this is the one that you're actually running the company um, uh, with. Uh, right? you, you know that, uh, that version of the model. Uh, it's important that you focus on what the assumptions are. You vet those assumptions, you question them. As investor dollars come in, you're actually using that money to increase scrutiny uh, and accuracy of that budget model. Um, and, and then my favorite tip for you, you might want to write it down, sales opportunities apparently do not pay your bills. Um, and then number three, uh, create value in your community. This is something we all need to do more of. Great seeing a lot of companies focusing in this area here today. Uh, but you, know, you have to uh, think about what it is you can do to give more to the community, to the, uh, the business out there. You should come in every day and ask that question yourself. So conclusion, don't shy away from sound business fundamentals. Sounds pretty straightforward, but that is important and I've had to remind myself that over and over. This is about balancing growth, uh, profitability and sustainability. Once you find out what value is, make sure you understand how to help your customers embrace that value and do that as quickly as possible. As you scale, do that locally and then maybe if it makes sense, go globally. And this is about you making a choice. What is it that you want to be? And remember, Zebras are real, unicorns are not. Thank you. Questions? Hi, it's uh, really interesting to see your and Fiona's approach to sustainable growth and getting the basics of economics right before you start growing really rapidly. But really curious to understand what was your approach to finances and managing the operational expenses in the initial stages while you're building out a team and also trying to get the right talent uh, and you know figure out the right uh, products and uh, the market size also. Yeah. I, I what was my approach to financing? Okay, um, don't run out of money. I think was probably the number one rule uh, I was I was typically trying to do. But you know, really, this is about running as many iterations before you run out of money. That, that that's I think the reality is keep running experiments, trying to understand what it is you're trying to do and find that fit uh, as fast as you can. And you're trying to balance that while trying to also be sustainable. Uh, I talked about the budget model. It's very easy to put sales opportunities out there. Obviously, you know what your expenses are going to be, uh, but your opportunities, uh, you got to focus on the ones that are uh, more likely to happen. And even those, I, I usually put a small percentage on. So trying to get some consistent revenue streams and then base your budget on that and then grow from there. Yeah. Uh, where did you go to learn about zebras? Um, I, I actually saw some nonprofit bring that up as a small concept uh, at some event that I was at a few months ago, and then I just Googled it, and actually there's not a lot on it. Uh, as we've started talking about this, I think there might be uh, a cool thesis that we can run from it uh, or maybe push forward. Maybe I need Alex's help uh, to put that together, but we started the zebra planes. I think even the concept of unicorns is, is changing. Uh, you spoke about Mark Benioff. He recently talked about how the position of a CEO is changing and how we have to do a lot more as CEOs to give back. So I think that the definitions are changing, but uh, it's still early on and, and maybe we can work through that and explain it a bit better next time. Yeah. One last question. Hi, uh, my name is Aditya from Vanhack. So as someone is, uh, who's running a Zebra company, have you seen a shift in the attitudes of venture capital funds towards companies like yours, SoftBank, WeWork, all the stuff that's been happening? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, I think, and again, I'm making up a lot of definitions since there's not a lot of content online, but my view of Zebra companies is that they, they shouldn't stifle growth. They, you can still have an opportunity to grow tr tremendously as a Zebra company, right? Just because you're a Zebra company doesn't mean that you can't create tremendous value for your customers, uh, employees, community, and, uh, and everyone else, and your business. So I think it's just maybe more of a step towards getting those funds in, and if you get to sound business fundamentals, then money will follow, yeah. Thank you. Okay.